Hello children, how are you? I am back with another great video about quadrilaterals and parallelograms. I am from Winning Edge, my name is Daljinder Singh and today we are going to see how quadrilateral and parallelogram play an important role in our RAMC exams clearance. So as I told you this chapter is very important. Now why am I saying that this chapter is important because in part B of the paper we see every year there are certain questions asked from these two topics. Now we are going to study what is a quadrilateral and what is a parallelogram. Okay so you want to learn and I'm uh, hopeful that you know most of you would have studied this in your school. If you have not studied don't worry pay attention here we'll study it today. Okay so let's see what is a quadrilateral. So quadrilateral is a any four-sided figure bounded by four line segments all right and you know the sum of angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degree as we know that in a triangle the sum of angles is 180 degree similarly in a quadrilateral the sum of angles is 360 degree clear i don't think there's any doubt right for example let's say we have a rectangle a rectangle has four angles as you can see and the sum of the four angles if you know all the angles in a rectangle are 90 90 90 and 90 so when we add them up how much do we get 9 for the 36 and 0 copy so this gives us 360 degree all right now we are going to see what are the type of quadrilaterals that we need to study uh, from the perspective of rams examinations so we are going to study about rectangle square parallelogram rhombus and trapezium now remember to in today's video we'll be looking at these five types of quadrilaterals with the perspective of lines and angles and not area and perimeter all right so let's move on to the next slide and see topics about these so the first type of quadrilateral we are going to see parallelogram now parallelogram itself is a quadrilateral because it is a four-sided figure as you can see in the figure alongside okay now what is a parallelogram? As its name suggests, a parallelogram is a four-sided figure which has equal and opposite sides and they are parallel, okay? As you can see, side AB is parallel to side DC, right? Similarly, side AD is parallel to side BC and both are in equal length. If side AB, AD is 4 cm, then side BC would also be 4 cm, okay? Now, uh, let's see what are the properties that we need to keep in mind while solving questions from parallelogram. Now, the first point is its opposite angles are equal. Now, what are opposite angles? Uh, let's say this is angle A and this is angle C. Now, both are opposite angles and in a parallelogram, both the opposite angles are equal. What are they? They are equal. For example, if this is 60 degree, then this would also be 60 degree. Both will be equal in their magnitude. Second property, opposite sides are equal in parallel. This we have already studied in the definition of the parallelogram that opposite sides are equal in parallel. Third point, diagonals bisect each other. Now, what is a diagonal? A diagonal is a straight line which bisects any figure into two equal parts. All right. For example, you can see this line AC. If you look, pay attention here. Side a, line AC is dividing this complete parallelogram into two equal parts, into two triangles, which is triangle ADC and triangle ACB, right? So what is it saying? It's saying that the diagonals bisect each other. Bisect means to divide into two equal parts. What does this mean? That side ED would be equal to side EB. Okay, if this is 6, this would also become 6. This is 4, this would also become 4. So the diagonals are bisecting each other. They're cutting each other into equal parts. Sum of any two adjacent angles is 180 degree. Now this property is very important from the perspective of solving questions. Uh, I have often seen that most of the questions come uh, or arise out of this property. Now, what is this property? This says that the adjacent angle sum is 180 degree. Okay. For example, if this is 60, this would be 120. How can I say this is 120? Because this property says that adjacent angles, adjacent angles which are together side by side. Okay. Their sum is 180 degree or we can also say their sum is supplementary that is 180 degree, right? So if this is 60, this should obviously be 120 because 180 minus 60 gives you 120. I hope you have understood this last property. Two properties you need to keep in mind. One is this last one and the other one is the first one. These two properties would really help you in solving the questions. Okay, now let's look at the next type of quadrilateral. The next type of quadrilateral is a rectangle. 
rectangle i know all of you know it already but we are just going to see it roughly because we are studying quadrilaterals okay so rectangle as you know is a four sided figure it has all the angles equal to 90 degree right and it has equal and opposite sides this is the longer side is called length the shorter side is called breadth you know it already and i also know it all the angles of a rectangle are 90 degree that we already studied opposite sides of a rectangle are equal and parallel equal i already told you because it has all the angles 90 degree and therefore these lines are also parallel among themselves okay diagonals of a rectangle bisect each other now as similar to a parallelogram we studied in the previous slide if there are diagonals in a rectangle these would also bisect each other that is they would divide each of them into equal parts similar to a parallelogram let's now look at the next type of quadrilateral here we have a square a square is a similar to rectangle all the properties will be similar to rectangle the only difference would be that it has all the sides equal whereas in a rectangle the sides were different opposite sides were equal but all the sides were not equal right it has all the sides equal let's say if this is four this would also be four the other two sides would also be four all the sides will be equal it has all the angles equal to 90 degree we already saw that now, uh, other point that we need to keep in mind while solving this is diagonals bisect each other perpendicularly. The word perpendicularly is very important here. Perpendicular means the 90 degree. So if let's say I am dividing this with the help of diagonals, these diagonals will meet each other at an angle of 90 degree and they would also divide each of them into equal parts as we studied in the previous quadrilaterals okay but uh, those were not cutting each other at an angle of 90 degree here we have to remember that in a square the diagonals cut each other at 90 degree okay let's move on to the next type of quadrilateral here you can see we have a rhombus a rhombus and square are quite similar but they are slightly different let's understand how they are similar and how they are different now just like a square it has all the sides equal as you can see in the figure given alongside right its diagonals also meet perpendicularly as we studied in square but the only difference between a square and a rhombus is that the angles between the sides is not necessarily equal to 90 degree if these angles were 90 degree this would form a square but if these angles are not 90 degree all the sides of the quadrilateral equal the diagonals are meeting at 90 degree then we would say it is a rhombus okay so kya farak hai dono mein or the only difference is that the angles between the sides is not 90 degree whereas in a square it was 90 degree however the sum of the angles of all the angles in this figure would also be equal to 360 degree as it is a property of a quadrilateral opposite angles are equal similar to a parallelogram here also we see that the opposite angles of a rhombus are equal okay so angle d would be equal to angle b in the figure all right all sides are equal i already explained that point to you opposite sides are parallel to each other now these sides are not just equal they are also parallel to each other so for example this side is parallel to this side and this will be parallel to this one okay clear now diagonals bisect each other perpendicularly this is already shown in the figure that both the diagonals db and ac are meeting each other at 90 degree right sum of any two adjacent angles is 180 degree now similar to a parallelogram as we started that the sum of any two adjacent angles is supplementary or vanity here also we will follow that property for example angle d plus angle a that is this angle their sum will be how much their sum will be 180 degree okay you remember that parallelogram property it's the same thing all right now let's move on to the next topic here we have the trapezium now let's understand a trapezium i know a lot of you don't know what a trapezium is and how does it look like but i hope now you know because it's there on the slide so a trapezium is a four sided figure as it is a quadrilateral and it has two parallel sides okay now this is the only figure which we have studied till now which is not having the opposite sides parallel or etc it is having just one pair of parallel sides which are these two sides ad and bc okay now these parallel sides are called bases of a trapezium okay we call them bases the other two sides that is ab and dc are called legs or the lateral sides as you can see in the definition here okay so trapezium has two bases and it has two legs or two lateral sides all right now it has uh, parallel sides as we just studied now what are the properties that we need to keep in mind while studying for trapezium 
only one pair of opposite sides are parallel to each other and hence in this type of question if this figure is given to you you would be asked questions based on the properties of parallel sides how i tell you see this ac is working as a diagonal for this figure it is also acting as a transversal for these two parallel lines so ac is working as a transversal as we know the properties of the parallel lines this angle will be equal to this angle here right and Similarly, we will be seeing other properties when we study the topic parallel lines, uh, but this will be integrated with the topic parallel lines. So you need to keep that in mind. Right now we are not studying with area perimeter concept. So we'll only look at the lines and angle perspective of this trapezium. All right. I'm hoping all of you have understood those figures. Now to test our knowledge and to test what we have understood from those figures, let's attempt some questions. One question is right there on your screen. I'll explain you this question here. So let's understand this. In the parallelogram, parallelogram given alongside, if angle Q, that is this one, is equal to 110 degree, find the measure of all the other angles of this parallelogram. Okay, we have to find the other angles. What are the other angles? Angle R, S and P. We have to find the value of these three angles okay now angle q is given 110 now if you remember i told you that the opposite angles in a parallelogram are equal right so if this is angle q as 110 this will also be equal to angle q which will be 110 all right after that we have angle s now angle s is 110 degree we already saw that now angle p plus q are supplement you remember that property where i told you that adjacent angles so of sum of adjacent angles in a quadrilateral or in a parallelogram particularly is supplementary 180 degree right so here if this is angle 110 this angle should be 70 degree why because 70 plus 110 will give you 180 degree so same thing we have done angle p plus angle q is equal to 180 degree right We'll take 110 on the other side, it will become minus 110. 180 minus 110 give us 70 degree as I already told you here. Now if this angle P is 70 degree, obviously angle R will also be 70 degree as we know the property. Opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. So if this is angle P is 70, angle R is also 70 degree. I hope all of you have understood this. You want to do more questions? Let's see this one. So question number uh, two says in the given figure A, B, C, D is a rhombus. Uh, rhombus you remember was all four sides are equal but the angle between the sides is not 90 degree and which meets at 90 degree whose diagonals meet at 90 degree. Yeah the same figure here is given to you. Find the values of X, Y, Z. As you can see in the diagram X, Y, Z is written 12, 5 and 13 is also written somewhere in the figure and we have to find the value of the variables. Okay. Now let's understand this is a very very simple question. We only have to do it on the property of diagonal. Okay. Now the property of diagonal told us that uh, these diagonals meet at 90 degree and they bisect each other into equal parts. Right. That's what we started. So let's see. Now what is the value of this 12? What is this 12? 12 is the length of side AO. Okay, that is half of this diagonal AC. AC is a complete diagonal. AO is half of it, right? So what is the other half? Other half is Y. Right? So Y as we know will be equal to the first half. So Y's value will also be 12 centimeter. Simple. You just need to name the property that the diagonals bisect each other. So if one is 12, the other obviously has to be 12 only. Similarly, in the diagonal DB, in DB we can see that BO is given to us as 5. So similarly DO will also be equal to 5 because it is the other half of the diagonal. So that is Z DO is equals to 5 centimeter. Simple? Very simple I guess, right? The last one. It is asking us the value of X. Now what is this X? X is one of the side of a rhombus which is AB. As I told you in the beginning of the question, a rhombus is a figure which has all the four sides equal, right? So if this is 13, this is also 13, this is also 13, this is also 13, which means X is how much? X is also 13. Very, very simple question. Uh, no simple properties you have to remember. Nothing like uh, you need extra brains to do these type of questions. You just need to know the basic concepts and you can score very good marks in RMC, right? Now let's look at the last question here. Yes, it's the last one. So you can definitely give it a watch. So the parallelogram ABCD is given to you in the figure, right? You have to find out the value of x and y, the two variables. Now this time x and y are not just the sides, they are angles. And they are not simply angles, they are the variables in between the values of the angles, okay? Now, uh, but it's a very, very simple question. As you see here, angle A 
and angle B are both supplementary angles. That is their sum is 180 degree, right? Because they are adjacent angles. So we'll simply write down angle A plus angle B equals to 180 degree. What is the value of angle A? It is 3y. So we wrote down 3y. What is the value of angle B? 2y minus 5. So we wrote down 2y minus 5. The like terms, 3y, 2y gets added up. It becomes 5y. And here is minus 5 equals to 180. Simple. Now, minus 5 will go on to the other side. It will become plus 5, right? It becomes 185 then. 5, 37 is 185. Because 5 is in multiplication with y. When 5 will go on to the other side, it will come in denominator. And the y will, on solving will give you 37 degree, right? So, this angle we have got 37 degree here. Now, angle A equals to angle C as opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. So, what is it saying? That the value of whatever value of angle A you are getting will be equal to the value of angle C here, right? So, what is the value of angle A? Angle A is given as 3y, right? And angle C is given as 3x plus 3. Now, we know the value of y here, but we do not know the value of x. We have not solved for x right now, right? So, anyway, we'll put down the value of y, which is 37 in this equation. Okay, so 3 into y that is 3 into 37. So, we have 3 into 37, like there, all right, which is equal to 3x plus 3. Now, the only variable in this equation will be x, and therefore we can find the value of x, all right. So, let's see here. So, 37 into 3 gives us 111, which is equal to 3x plus 3, the opposite angle. See, you remember now 111 minus 3 will give you 3x, we'll bring plus 3 on this side, it will become minus 3, right. This gives you 108 equals to 3x. X becomes equal to what? 108 upon 3 on solving, which gives you how much? 36 degree. So these are the values of x and y. X is 36 and y was 37 degree. Very simple question. Just the two properties of angles as I already told you in the beginning of this quadrilateral parallelogram that you need to remember the properties related to the angles, right? I'll wrap up this video here and I'll see you in the next video. We'll be doing an exercise based on this. Uh, you need to really watch that video out because we'll be doing plentiful of questions which are based on RMC paper pattern. Do give it a watch. I'll see you next time. Till then, keep studying.